All right, hello, hello. We have a very special guest today, Simon Muscaria. He is <laughs> the founder and the creator of Soma Mushrooms Inc. and the Wild Mushroom Alliance. Welcome, Simon. Hi, hi. Yeah, cool. Well, if you have not met Sun before, you're about to meet a wizard. That's right, a modern day wizard, uh, an absolute fun guy who's, uh, yes, uh, look at all those books behind you. Those are all related to fungi, to mushrooms, you know, the topic of lichens I see there, exotic mushrooms, soma, the mushroom with immortality, I'm kind of reading some of the titles here. That's awesome. Yeah, I've been collecting, that's my I'm a collector and that's been sort of my, uh, my obsession my whole life is as I, I, I love collections in general, but especially ones that relate to, to nature and art. So um, I started collecting mushroom books it was my first sort of one of my first collections essentially, because um, at a very young age got obsessed with mushrooms and then but the only real access to mushroom information back in the late 80s early 90s was you know your public library so I would travel around Edmonton where I'm from to every different library and basically scope out all the different mushroom books possible and you know basically just you go into used bookstores and and always be hunting out mushroom books or cool comics was was my main thing or anything to do with with botany or horticultural technologies but mostly Back then, again, it was, it was, you know, looking for really cool identification guides, and uh, and the founder of one of the, one of the main founders of the uh, back then, I guess, it was the Edmonton Mycological Society, but became the Alberta Mycological Society was Helena Shalkovic, and um, a lot of people know her book. It's it's this is the original version of it, and then the new version of it looks like this and it's it's sort of the official point not that one it's the official book of um of the alberta mycological society and uh just so it turns out that we had the same doctor so one day when i was like i think it was 10 or 11 years old i was in the doctor's office and i don't know if she was looking through a mushroom guide or something like that but all of a sudden met this older lady that um was into mushrooms and 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 I told her I was crazy about mushrooms and so she promptly started writing me letters and stuff like that and I went to her house to visit her place and, and her place was amazing um mushrooms everywhere like she did all of the the um basically the identification guide is all paintings that she's done so it's huge she did hundreds and hundreds of mushroom paintings this is actually the original of the uh, Lexinum boreal, which is uh, not officially, but basically Alberta's provincial mushroom. And it was my, uh, happened to be my grandmother's favorite mushroom too. And so um, that really dove me into the, you know, finding somebody else. And um, that was into mushrooms back in the early, early nineties. And I went to a few of the Alberta um, or Edmonton Mycological Society meetings, but it, you know, met Martin Osis there and um, Robert Rogers eventually was part of that in the beginning. And um, that her, her mushroom book library sure inspired me. Um, and so since basically, yeah, at least the early 90s, I've been obsessed with collecting mushroom books and pretty much try to get get a copy of every different one I can get my hands on, even in, in all kinds of other languages. And then not just necessarily identification guides, the whole broad spectrum of anything related to mushrooms. So when I was a kid, I wanted the complete collection of mushroom, everything I could find. And, and so it became a little overwhelming. And eventually I almost got a little, um, th there just ends up being so many mushroom things. When you, when you look at it in culture and art, it goes, it's endless. And it's, and then, so I was a bit of a mushroom freak um, for most of my life. And then obviously in the past few years, mushroom, this mush boom is going on. So um, it's fun because I get to become a lot more relevant rather than just this mushroom weirdo. So that's, that's kind of the story behind all these books and the story of the stories. Cool. That's amazing. Yeah. It sounds like we got a similar journey, just this fascination that caught us early and you wow, you had some amazing chance encounters that led to guides and mentors that have uh, helped, helped shape your path. 
Yeah, Alberta happens like the Alberta Mycological Society is one of the largest membered societies of all different types of, you know, nature societies. And I, it's kind of strange because, you know, BC has so much more, um, you know, mushroom biodiversity ultimately because of the temperate rainforest side of things is a lot more conducive to, 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 to mushrooms. And but the boreal forest is obviously awesome for it. But um, I, I was lucky in Edmonton and just by chance to, to be sort of grandchilded into it through Helena and, um, and that she's from Edmonton and Robert Rogers is from Edmonton, Martin Ose is right from Edmonton. So there's all this like, at least in my opinion, major mycophile like um, elders that um, I look up to really greatly as sort of my, my mushroom grandparents. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, so we, we definitely carry that book, that one that you showed, uh, the updated version. And uh, what I love about it is I can see why it is like the official book of uh, or unofficial official book of the Alberta Mycological Society, because it's absolute the best for identification. What it lacks, which is what Robert Rogers is really good for, is the, the medicinal information, you know, with his books, the fungal pharmacy. So the pairing of those two is is just incredible. And, uh, you know, for anybody that's in Alberta or, you know, wants to kind of know the scene, there's there's always, uh, at least for me growing up, and I'm sure it still exists, this kind of like battle of Alberta, like Calgary versus Edmonton. But when it comes to fungi, like Edmonton just clearly wins out. I mean, you just mentioned three incredible people, the names, the fact that it was Edmonton Mycological Society, and they very generously included Calgary and expanded it to Alberta. But uh, I know from yours and I's personal experience, I know you like like to still go up to Edmonton and beyond uh, because into the Boreal you get access to a uh, much greater diversity of fungi not only the diversity but also an abundance as well you know in southern Alberta we're a little bit dry it's hit or miss but Edmonton and, and north is awesome. Yeah especially getting into places with lots of birch trees um, because I'm focused on medicinal mushrooms so much birch trees are sort of the um, well, the, to me, they're the main medicinal tree in, in general. And so I really focus on as, as many different medicinal mushrooms as I can find associated with birch as possible. And then I, I have a, a tincture called Chagameister, which is a homage to birch in general, because it's, it's all, all the ingredients are involved, are five medicinal mushrooms exclusively from birch. And they don't exclusively grow on birch, but some of them definitely do. And then um, other extractions from birch trees in general. And so that's a big part of the, the boreal forest. And there's not so much of that over in BC as much in the temperate rainforest. So it's, it's the, the wild mushroom alliances playground is kind of, uh, yeah, the one, one, one foot on the side of the Rockies into the boreal and one foot into the temperate. And I'm really, we're really blessed that way to have a nice, diverse, um, robust ecology of, of, old, of, you know, old, old and young, because there's different mushrooms that associate with different ages of forest too. So it's not like we, uh, we, we have a diversity of ages of forest. So that even brings the eco ecology and bi biodiversity of mushrooms into a broader spectrum. Yeah, cool. Well, hey, I'm, I'm super stoked to get into this conversation uh, already. Loved hearing about, uh, you know, kind of who you are, but I think we should even back up a little bit further. There's, we've mentioned a couple things here that uh, as I introduced you, kind of the founder of Soma Mushroom Inc. So I want to hear about that. And then also Wild Mushroom Alliance. Give us a little bit of insight on that. And I'll just preface it by saying that Simon is a returning presenter, second year in a row at the Medicinal Mushroom Symposium. And last year, he just blew us all away with this just absolutely gorgeous, moving, uh, what should we call it? Like presentation that, you know, took us on a journey of your wild foraging adventures. So, yeah, you know, photographic you know, journey photographic journey it was phenomenal and uh, I know when it comes to you know our connection to fungi you know that is at the heart it's at the core right is being out in the woods being in relationship with these fungi and this year you're going to share kind of the the other side of that 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 medicine making that you so focus on and you do incredibly well so the name the title of your talk this year is biomolecular mycology the art of extracting wild mushrooms from around the world so you'll give us a little bit of kind of insight into that but maybe as a preface you know tell us about uh, soma mushrooms and tell us about the wild mushroom alliance so soma mush there's there's two to, to me there's two big there's there's um 
there's a whole circle of, of the mycoverse and the circle is divided into four parts. And two of those parts are wild mushrooms in general and then Amanita muscariae. And that's sort of the top two half of the, of the medicine wheel circle kind of thing. And then the bottom four quarters, one is psilocybin and then the other one I call just generic mushrooms. So whether or not that's growing gourmet or growing medicinal, the premise is around that it's, it's, the, it's the controlled um, environment growing side of it. Then there's the wild side of it. And then there's the Amanita side of it. And then the psilocybin side. So those four sectors um, are, are all obviously mushrooms, but they, they branch off into huge differences of essentially how to un unravel the Pandora's um, rabbit holes that they take you down if, 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 you're, if you're following any of those different paths. And they are totally different paths. Like the psilocybin side of things is very um, indoor, major phenotypic um, cultivation. And, and, and it's kind of like the way that the cannabis industry is where you have all these different strains of essentially, you know, one genus of plant, even, even just two species for that matter. I mean, really most of the mushrooms being grown uh, that build this huge array of all these different names of psilocybin, they're still all psilocybin cubensis. So one of the interesting things that that shows is that there's a ton of, um, I'm assuming the word is phenotypic diversity within one species. And you kind of see that in the Amanita in the sense of Amanita muscariae has a ton of subspecies, but um, so it, within the wild mushroom context, you're obviously, then you're breaking into the giant um, super menagerie of, of ecology and then the cultivate, cultivar side of it I mean, it, was, it wasn't that long ago that pretty much all we had was just criminy mushrooms, right? The, the Agaricus bisporus. So, um, and then, you know, in China, they had tons and tons of different, uh, well, not tons, but they had a much larger diversity of, of medicinal, mostly, you know, medicinal mushrooms, but a lot of them were still just gourmet. Like lion's mane doesn't actually come from a background of medicinal mushroomness. It comes from a gourmet side of it. And that's because, its um, structure had a lot more to do with being conducive to being good in the kitchen. Like, you know, you like having something you can slice up and fry up and has some sort of meat to it. And that's, <clears throat> that's, that's much more conducive in, in a lion's main monkey head mushroom is what they call it. Cause it looks like a solid puff ball versus let's say um, the Coralloides or the Americanum that is a lot more branchy and fractally. So, um, I, I, I kind of play in all of those four sectors. So Soma Mushrooms Inc. is kind of like the umbrella for, for me playing in those different uh, sectors because I also do, um, I, I design mushroom grow facilities. And so I do consulting and contracting for actually designing mushroom grow facilities. So that sort of falls under the, the, the lower half of the circle with psilocybin and, and, and other um, cultivars, whether or not they're gourmet or medicinal. But everything originally came from the wild. And so going back into the wild and, and especially in our local environment, and that's what Robert Rogers book really um, woke me up to was that, you know, at growing up, I was, mushrooms were my friends. They weren't necessarily something I went hunting in order to, to you know, throw in a fry pan or make a tincture out of. I didn't even really ever consider that. I, I foraged some, you know, my, my grandmother's favorite mushrooms because both my grandmother on my, on my mother's side and my father's side were European avid, you know, mushroom foragers to a degree. So that's what originally got me into it as a little kid. And then I was, I was crazy about the Amanita mushroom as a little kid. It became basically my spirit animal. So Soma relates to, um, Soma relates to the Amanita muscariae in the sense of that uh, Soma is, is an elixir, like a, a special elixir from, from Vedic philosophy. So one of the original oldest, types of uh, religion slash, slash spirituality slash um, uh, cultural, um, what's it called, um, basically uh, ethnogens kind of thing. So Gordon Wasson wrote this book, Soma, um, Divine Mushroom of Immortality, and that's how the word Soma really got affiliated with the Amarita Muscariah. And um, I found that book, um, when I was probably 11 or 12. So that's where I got interested in this concept of Soma and Soma actually means body. And so um, it, it really associates it for, for me that mushrooms were my friends, that they were kind of these 
expressions of the of the artistic, imaginative, spiritual nature of the forest. I thought I thought of them as the third eye of the forest. These little, like sort of just like how an iris is the most sort of colorful part usually of someone's body. The mushrooms are almost in some level or flowers, but specific, specifically mushrooms are kind of these eyeball shaped things that are sort of representative of one of the most colorful parts of the forest and in a sort of offset, almost like imagination kind of color palette of the forest. So they, they reminded me of the idea of like the way the imagination connects to the third eye, connects to, um, you know, spirit and, and basically, so mushrooms are this third eye extension of, of sort of the forest meditating on connecting to everything else, especially through this extent neural network that connects everything in the forest. So there was a very um, spiritual artistic aspect of mycology is, is where I started from. And then I, again, mushrooms became my friends. And then it wasn't until, um, and I'll get more into this in the presentation, but a battle with Lyme disease that really got me into the medicinal side of mushrooms and then connecting through Robert Rogers fungal pharmacy to realizing that um, the mushrooms were calling me in a medicinal way from, from our own ecosystem here. And, and, and those friends were literally calling me because most mushroom people know that there's sort of a strange subconscious internal instinctual dialogue with, uh, with mushrooms when you're foraging that they, they lead you certain ways in the forest. So Soma Inc. comes from having an umbrella company around um, all the different things that I dabble with in the microverse. And then especially within the Amanita muscariah side of things. And it's not necessarily that, like I'm, I'm working on a whole Amanita muscariah research project is what um, I'll talk about in the symposium. And uh, that doesn't seem like has been done before. There's tons and tons of papers that have been written about Amanita and especially because it's got very interesting target chemistry in it. And then obviously this giant historical background all the way back into like divine mushroom of immortality that that book really goes into like the idea of of how um amanita muscariah relates to even like a sacrament in christianity i know that might sound blasphemous to some people but it you know there uh, i'll show you pictures in uh, in the symposium that it's like undeniable that there's some um as, whether it's coincidence or not it would be surprising that it was that accurate of a coincidence to just be totally unrelated and then um the wild mushroom alliance is a way for me to talk about how the alliance specifically has to do with um forming alliances with different forests around the world because the the moral of the story of the wild mushroom alliance is to help the forest help people help the forest so like stamets would say just because we don't understand the language of nature doesn't impugn its intelligence and like mckenna would say terence mckenna would say um, it's not that nature is mute, it's that we are deaf. And so there's, you know, especially now with this sort of giant citizen science movement and, and you know, I have access to amazing lab equipment and, and private lab analysis and we, you can do so much more citizen scientists sort of cracking the code of the language of nature, so to speak, rather than it being this sort of high-end pharmaceutical side of um, endeavors or just like, you know, un university projects, we, we can, you know, if you have a calling with, with these, with this biochemistry, so to speak, because one of the main aspects of like, let's say the foundation of the alphabet of the language of nature is what I consider to be biochemistry. And that's what I've sort of like self-proclaimed myself as a biomolecular mycologist. That's not necessarily a real title, but, um, bio the, 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 the biomolecular status of, of, of all these, this target chemistry and just chemistry in general in mushrooms is really um, an interesting way to start unpacking the concept of the, of the language of nature. And you can do it with plants, obviously, and, and, and you know, like ayahuasca there, or a, a, a lot of the, um, the, the psychedelics are actually, like even LSD, the, these, are, these are fungal related, but there's definitely major alkaloids in plants that are, are, are major informative uh, molecules, so to speak, in the sense of the, the download that you get from it, the trip that you have on it, the, um, the association with the learning experience that you can have. And then look at psilocybin. It's a, it's a, it's a, um, a serotogenetic um, 
serongenic, I don't really know how to say the word, but it, rela it relates to serotonin the way that serotonin relates to the brain. And serotonin is a major part of, I, I consider serotonin a major part of the learning experience. So when you're learning something and you're having positive, positive feedback from what you're learning, you're literally growing synapses that cause that learning experience to become, you know, something you can draw on from a memory and, and essentially the brain becoming a muscle for muscle memory in, in the sense of like remembering it and learning how to fine tune your ability to, to focus. And so it's interesting how mushrooms, there our body soma is genetically that much more related to the, the, the fungi kingdom, even more than the plant kingdom. So there's sort of something to be said there is how the, the biochemistry in the sense of the language of nature coming through mushrooms is that much more tuned into the humans, um, aspect of language so maybe there's less lost in translation so to speak into our biochemistry because what I'm really interested in is how the chemistry correlates to the consciousness and how that also correlates to the cosmos because it's it's not just the surface of this planet that is our ecosystem really there's the whole solar system that is actually our ecosystem if you consider the magnetic fields of the way that the the the, the magnetic field energies relate to the surface of the planet. And especially with, with botany and mycology, those organisms are that much more sensitive to these subtle energies because they're typically, you know, positioned in one place their whole time. So they really get sensitive to living for sometimes thousands of years like a tree would, but in one spot. And therefore like really feeling, um, you know, the vibe of the larger schema of, of, of the ecosystem, which relates to the whole solar system is, is a theory that I have. And that's why I like to think of like that, um, that it's not only the way that chemistry correlates to our own body and our own consciousness, but how that even extends to the cosmos. And so that's the, the wild mushroom Alliance has to do with collaborating with different foragers around the world to bring in exotic, interesting little small batches of wild mushrooms, and then have this, um, basically chain of custody showing that here's the forest area and, and the region on the, in the world that these and the type of forest that these mushrooms came from. Here's some pictures of them in their, in their natural habitat. Here's some photos of them being processed. And then here's the small batch um, that is going to be online with, with the Wild Mushroom Alliance's website. And then you can kind of backtrack through the story of, you know, the actual mushrooms in the bottle and the picture on the bottle of those mushrooms will be the actual mushrooms in the bottle in the sense of like a photograph of the literally the mushroom that is in that bottle. And, and then there's that much more of ability to connect to the um, experience of what that mushroom has to teach you. And therefore like more connection to the language of nature. And that is supposed to, by helping the forest help people help the forest, it's kind of like being the lawyer for the Lorax and, and like basically like um, fighting for, for the voice of the forest and in court, so to speak, of saying forests are seen for the trees, not for the ecosystem. And that that is totally undervaluing that area. And that a forest looked at as non-timber products that are also, especially medicines, um, year after year in an established ecosystem is, is, is the way to evaluate an established ecosystem rather than a bunch of lignin that you're gonna wipe your butt with in the end. <laughs> no, totally. Yeah, beautiful, beautifully said. There's uh, there's a lot to unpack there, and uh, yeah, oh for sure. So I know that we've got uh, some of the tinctures that you've been uh, working with and developing uh, available at Light Cellar. Um, how else do people, you know, get to know you, connect with you, you know, reach out to you? Uh, share share with folks your contacts. Well. Um... Mostly I've been connecting with people on Instagram, even though my Instagram profile is pretty, pretty pathetic. Cause I, it's not that I don't have thousands of mushroom photos. I just haven't taken the time to, um, uh, to bombard my Instagram account with them. And, um, but mushroom.jedi is my Instagram account. And, and that's a good way to get a hold of me. Otherwise, um, Simon Metke on, on Facebook, but my Facebook doesn't really talk about the mushroom side of things. And, um, I, I, I've been working on the Wild Mushroom Alliance website for quite a while. And, and one of the big things that happened with this whole mushroom endeavor is that, um, like, as, like, as, like I said, when I was a kid, I wanted the complete collection of mushroom stuff and then soon realized that was impossible because we're still at the cutting edge of rea realizing how much mushroom, much ado about mushrooms there is. So um, 
as I got into the, 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 the chemistry side of it, it sure got um, uh, big and complicated as I'll show in, 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 in the symposium of some of the stuff that I'm finding inside of mushrooms, essentially. Um, so it's taken a lot longer to get the website up and the products kind of finished and, and everything photographed. I'm doing everything myself in the sense of um, all of the, the graphic design and, and the foot photography and the, 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 a lot of the foraging and the networking and the extraction, and then um, have some help with, with the, the IT side of getting the website up, but ultimately be up to me to put everything up there. So um, I'm spinning so many different plates. So it's, it's best, it's, everything is unfolding um, as quickly as all these things can move together forward simultaneously as quickly as possible. But ultimately mushroom.jedi is uh, on Instagram is, is the best way to, to find me. And eventually that'll be also a great place to, to see thousands of really cool wild mushroom pictures of mine, yeah, exactly. as well as like, that's the best place for, I, I find the mushroom community on Instagram is just exploding. And that's such a, uh, the, one of the coolest things about mushrooms is ultimately the photography. So that's one of the best places to get to, to get to feel that out. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. I know you've got hundreds, thousands, like you said, of incredible photographs and that's the challenge of, of being kind of the entrepreneur. And sometimes, you know, like it's very clear your connection is with the fungi, it is with the, for, uh, the forest, uh, like you mentioned, you know, even helping others set up grow facilities, uh, and then the extraction process and uh, sometimes these other things, you know, that need to be done can be a bit more of a challenge, but I recognize, you know, where your genius is at and uh, stoked for this presentation that you're really going to be sharing. I, I love the terminology, biomolecular mycology. I mean, that's, that's what it is. You're getting deep into the chemistry and that's why I introduced you as a wizard, you know, like uh, your level of relationship, your level of insight, your level of working with that biomoleculars of each of these fungi and really just trying to optimize uh, the extraction. It's, it's, it's next level. So it's, it's going to be fantastic. Yeah. The making the most of the mushrooms is the most important part to me that in the sense of like, if you're going to forage and harvest wild mushrooms, extracting can be difficult. So um, making sure that you're doing it thoroughly for the sake of honoring that these mushrooms spent, well, this forest spent a whole long time growing and then these mushrooms spent a whole long time, you know, competing against their environment and surviving and then expressing themselves in their fruiting body. And that there's, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot more packed into the story about all of that. And essentially the diversity of the chemistry that ends up expressing itself, it seems, and compared to a controlled environment, um, and, and cultivating fungi, not that cultivating fungi isn't a great way to access mushrooms, but um, you can you can really scale that up versus with the with the wild side you can't necessarily scale it up. A lot of the wild ones you can't necessarily cultivate, and so I'm working with like literally a hundred different wild mushrooms. So um, there's it's kind of a ridiculous amount of different uh, medicinal mushroom tinctures to to try that I have these little limited edition batches of that'll eventually be on the site and then there'll be some 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 main ones of of the mushrooms that are the most abundant like chaga and and certain types of reishi that um that there'll be more of like a, a continual staple um uh, side on the website of but it's going to be like a a library of of wild mushroom lab grade extract um, dialogues that you can have. Not only can you like necessarily look and research about this mushroom, but here's a place to access, um, you know, taking them for a spin in, in, in your taste buds and really getting to know what they're like. And a little interesting secret about it is, is that um, especially if you're working with psilocybin mushrooms, psilocybin mushrooms, remember, are basically coming from a, even though they, they have so much to do with like, um, sort of uh, healing in lots of different ways, let's just call it, whether it's, it's emotional or, or anxiety or spiritual or all these different, but mush and, and, and people really equate mushrooms to like a connection to nature, but psilocybin mushrooms are basically all coming from highly controlled um, ecosystems in the sense of a grow room. So they're very, and they're usually really weird hybrids that would never exist in nature anyway. So that's far removed from the, the kind of, um, natural context that this this target chemistry and this sort of language of nature um, biomolecular dialogue is coming from with psilocybin. So 
pairing psilocybin back into the wild mushroom side of things. Like for instance, um, uh, a while ago when I was on a little bit of a psilocybin journey, I just happened to try some um, really potent red, red belt uh, extract that I had made. And instantly, like as the flavor hit, hit my mouth and like interacted with my saliva glands and it absorbed into my mouth, like it totally changed the, the, the channel of, of the experience of the psilocybin. So I really do believe that, that this, these, these mushroom molecules, so to speak on like synergize with each other and communicate with each other and have all kinds of different symphonies of downloads to teach us. Yeah. Amazing. Cool. That's a really interesting insight. And, you know, you correctly gave that analogy between, you know, where cannabis is and where psilocybin seems to be going. Yeah. We often so think of it as something, you know, so natural, but yet how it's being produced, you know, industrially is, is far from it. So yeah, it's a really key critical aspect to maintain that wildness of the other fungi and in, in bringing that connection in because it's, it's something that's so much more true and authentic and it can't be scaled up, can't be taken out of that and uh, has within it, like you say, a language of, of nature that's so much more inherent and can really tap us, our consciousness deeply. Yeah, it's a really interesting thing to consider. Okay, there's, there's, there's mushrooms and mushrooms are the thing that's popular right now. And everybody's, you know, some people really understand the concept of mushroom and how diverse it is. Some people you know, um, it's still very introductory to them, this concept of like what a mushroom is. And there's been a lot of, especially in Western, um, uh, like American culture, there's a huge, there's been a lot of unlearning that's happened about our connection to mycology based on um, getting people to fear mushrooms because of, you know, thinking of being poisoned and stuff like that. And it's not, this movement isn't actually, I mean, it's about mushrooms but it's more so about the target chemistry in mushrooms. And so, you know, you could say sort of a mushroom is a mushroom is a mushroom in the sense of like, you can find them in the wild, you can find them in a bunch of strange places and it, you see a mushroom, but just because you see that mushroom, it's gonna have a, it, they can, it could be the same mushroom in a whole bunch of different places and have totally different um, inherent uh, chemistry inside of it because they're also like hugely bioremediators. So, their environment severely affects their, their, the mushroom's expression. Because remember, the mushroom is just the flower. It's the fruit. It's the sexual organs of a mycelial network. And that mycelial network is doing a ton of crazy, complicated stuff compared to just realizing, okay, here's a mushroom. And that's already complicated enough. And, and so it's just like, it, it, we're, we're, it's a very, um, mushrooms are, and then there's a total pun intended. They're a very umbrella term. Um, and they're umbrella shaped and they're just, you know, a lot of them. So it's, it has to do with, and what, what, what we're really learning to realize here, like the language of nature is not only coming through, like having a, um, that visual connection that mushrooms are cool expressions of nature, but that there's this chemistry in there that is ultimately giving us an opportunity to, um, reassess, uh, what's going on in an ecosystem and then how, if we'd make a controlled environment, what's going on in a controlled environment version of expressing a mushroom versus what's going on in the ecosystem's version of expressing a mushroom and how to start comparing that and then learning, you know, what, what that means. And then if, if, if we're making all these mushroom products, um, again, you know, it's one thing to call it a mushroom and then it's another thing, okay, well, what is in this actually? And that's a huge complicated other aspect of the mushroom industry is that there hasn't really been any standards created. And so there's like a major diversity of mushroom products out there. And a ton of them aren't technically mushroom products because a mushroom is the fruiting body of a mycelial network. So if you're getting a myceliated grain product, it's not a mushroom product. And then yeah. the word, so the word mushroom is this umbrella term that has all this, um, you know, uh, this giant theme behind it but the the next the, 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 over the next decade it's going to be a huge dive down the rabbit hole of research into what mushrooms are really made out of and what that target chemistry represents and so um it's it's hard to find anybody that you can really heavily follow in the footsteps of that is doing that kind of stuff so i'm just some you know kid from alberta that was crazy about mushrooms that took his artistic background and, and applied the attention to detail of, of the way that I do art into like really trying to 
figure out what the heck mushrooms actually are right. and then what that what that means to um the art you the, what that means to the concept of you are what you eat because obviously if you eat mushrooms you're not necessarily becoming a mushroom but you're becoming you're 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 amalgam you're you're synergizing with the target chemistry inside those mushrooms and then obviously that's a huge important factor of um things to consider especially these days when it comes down to um enhancing our immune system or um dealing with trauma or just being um, a, more of an optimal organism in general, especially when it comes down to um, surviving in an environment. And mushrooms are a very interesting organism that has an interesting way of surviving in an environment. And, and so I like to think of it as, um, you know, if you are what you eat and you want to be a durable organism, then eat durable organisms. For sure. It's about that adaptability, that resilience. Yeah, I've, I've loved so much of what you've said uh, during this interview. And, uh, you know, the future is fungi. You and I both know that. I love what you said about how it really is. It's it's like, you know, you can't really, there, there are certain individuals within kind of a short amount of time that have really been pioneers. We've mentioned a couple names like Robert Rogers, who's literally probably written the most number of books uh, on this topic, at least medicinals. And there's still so much to go. And I think you're doing it right. You're being led by the fungi, right? Like that is how we're going to move forward. And uh, the other thing that I thought was really brilliant was this idea you mentioned of kind of like the umbrella, that, that analogy, that metaphor, and that it's just the fruiting body. But what is underneath the surface, right? We're looking at that part, which is totally mysterious just in and of itself. But underneath it, right, there's, there's a whole other layer, a whole other story uh, to, to explore. And I think that is symbolic of you know, the kingdom of fungi of just so much depth and so many mycelial webs and hyphae to, you know, like go through and explore. So here we are. And uh, this is one of the reasons we do the Medicinal Mushroom Symposium. It's why we have people like Robert Rogers, we have Simon, we have Yara, we have all these experts uh, come together for a week. And I'm super excited. Uh, it's going to be March 20th to 24th, uh, five nights, two presenters per night, a deep dive. So Simon, we have you paired with uh, uh, Tony Oakworth. So his, so you're going to be going at 7 p.m. for a nice deep dive for an hour, uh, biomolecular and mycology, the art of extracting wild mushrooms around the world. And then at eight, it'll be dimensions of healing, comparing and contrasting the micro and the macro dose of psilocybin with uh, Tony Oakworth of Mycelial Mind and Pacific Rim and, and his own uh, pursuits. So yeah, if anybody is uh, yet to register, love to have you join us. Simon's got a little code, SM20. Uh, you can get 20 bucks off uh, the registration. Early bird uh, is ending uh, tonight. So Thursday kind of price will go up, but uh, if you can get in, get registered, love to have you join us. And I know I'm, I'm stoked to hear from you again, Simon, uh, this year. So any kind of final parting thoughts or comments? Uh, just, yeah, super looking forward to it. I, like I was saying, it's cool how, um, you know, the, the psilocybin side of, um, which is, which is such a huge aspect in, in mycology right now pairs really well, um, with the, with the wild side and how, um, how not only can we get a lot of healing from psilocybin in so many ways, but remembering if you want to enhance that a little bit more into the dialogue with nature to, to play with some, some wild concentrated wild pure wild mushroom extracts while you're playing with psilocybin i think is going to be a secret uh, aspect of 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 the nature therapy side of all of that which is what most people especially in macro doses really realize that psilocybin has a lot to offer from and so yeah looking forward to being part of the um the microverse is unfolding again this year and the very, the very humbling path of, of move, moving forward on, on the, the cutting edge of, of biomolecular mycology. Yeah, right on. Cool. Well, thanks again. I'll post uh, some, some links, things that you had suggested down below. If you can connect with Simon on Instagram, all that, as well as links to checking out the full schedule and all the details related to the symposium. And uh, yeah, if you're here in Night Cellar, uh, check out some of Simon's tinctures. Totally incredible. And uh, thanks for being on the call with us this afternoon. For sure. Live long and pro spore. <laughs> right on.